This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. I'm still getting over that last guest. Uh, What was his name? Bobby Legend? Yeah, he's a legend in his own mind, that guy is. Huh. I'm telling you. (laughs) My poor producer Craig nearly pulled all the hair out of his head. That's pretty hard considering he's bald. Yeah, Craig, I don't know. That one there has to be the weirdest one all year so far. But you know what, Craig? We've got a great lady with us this hour, and it's a lady that I've had the pleasure of having on the show before. Her name is Leslie Rule, Exonation. And uh, Leslie has written books including Coast to Coast Ghosts, True Stories of Hauntings Across America, Ghosts Among Us, True Stories of Spirit Encounters, When the Ghost Screams, True Stories of Victims Who Haunt and Ghosts in the Mirror, Real Cases of Spirit Encounters. Exonation Leslie is an author of six books and dozens of articles published in national magazines, including Reader's Digest features on ghosts and murder. She has been researching haunted places for a decade, and uh, many of the cases are featured in her four best-selling books of ghost stories. In addition to her non-fiction work, Leslie published uh, two suspense novels with paranormal elements in the mid-1990s. Leslie is also a photographer and began accompanying her mother, true crime author Anne Rule, to murder trials at the age of 17 to shoot killers. Hey, I thought murder was illegal, but I guess she's talking about with a camera. (laughs) Uh, Her spooky childhood did not start there, however. Uh, She was born on a dark and stormy night. Sounds like something from a Hitchcock movie, right? It was a dark and stormy night when Leslie Rule was born, and she grew up in a haunted house atop a burial ground. Ooh. Leslie Rule, welcome back to the X-Zone. How are you, my dear? I'm great, Rob. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I must tell you that um, ghosts... They, it seems that more and more people are talking about ghosts these days. More people are taking ghost hunting on as a hobby. And, uh, you know, unlike you, these people are brand new to the genre. And you've been doing ghosts as, you know, having experiences and, and being part of this haunting hobby now. For you, it's not a hobby, but this haunting experience for many years. Why do you think so many people are getting involved in ghosts these days? Um, It's really turned into a big fad, and I think there's always been a fascination with the other side. Mm -hmm. But now that we've got so many television programs that are geared toward ghost hunters, it's really sparked the public's imagination. And it's a a, a fun thing to do, and it doesn't cost very much, and it's exciting. So it's a natural. It's a natural, and... um... How, how do you deal with skepticism when people say, ghost, there's no such thing as a ghost? Well, it doesn't bother me if someone doesn't believe in ghosts. Um, it actually kind of amuses me because I've got so many witnesses to um, apparitions and other odd occurrences who've told me that they used to be skeptics until they saw a ghost. And so I always kind of mm-hmm. smile when somebody tells me they don't believe because I figure that one of these days they're going to have an experience and it's going to 
turn them completely around. Hopefully. Because there are those diehard skeptics that they could see a ghost or a ghost could bite them right in the butt and they still wouldn't believe that they've just been bitten in the butt by a ghost. That's probably true, but one day they will be on the other side and then they will realize that there's more to the world than meets the eye. All right, stand by, Leslie. You and I have to take our first commercial break for this hour. XO Nation, Leslie Rule is our very special guest. www.ghostygirl.com That's www.ghostygirl.com Exo Nation, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break in two minutes with Leslie Rule as we continue talking about ghosts. And by the way, once again, some of her books are Coast to Coast Ghosts, True Stories of Hauntings Across America, Ghosts Among Us, True Stories of Spirit Encounters, When the Ghost Screams, True Stories of Victims Who Haunt, and Ghosts in the Mirror, Real Cases of Spirit Encounters. Leslie Rule www.ghostygirl.com We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break in two minutes as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McC... This is Johanna Carroll, host of Dialogue with Divinity on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. While walking along Kanapali Beach in Maui this past year, I kept discovering all these shells and coral in the shape of hearts. My dialogue with divinity was very simple. Do you want me to do a retreat to heal people's hearts in Maui next year? And of course, the answer was yes. As a master spiritual teacher, I am offering you a neat retreat called Rise, May 8th through the 12th, 2017 and the chance of a lifetime to rest at a five-star resort for five days and experience a spiritual renewal of your heart and soul. Kanapali is one of the top five beaches in the world. This stunning resort has undergone a $40 million renovation. I walked the entire property, checked out the room choices on your behalf, and I must say it is stunning. Our conference room faces the ocean with sliding glass doors. Maui is known as Mother Maui because it is a soft, gentle, healing energy. In the embrace of Mother Maui, you will feel yourself rising from the limitations of an ordinary life to an extraordinary journey of peace, bliss, and harmony, a greater sense of clarity. Our RISE retreat ignites renewal in the sacred elements of air, water, earth, fire, and wind. There's plenty of free time to enjoy all that Maui has to offer. A small deposit is required now to reserve your space as this retreat, it will sell out. For more details, please go to johannacarroll.com and register today. Aloha and I'll see you in mystical Maui. Leslie Rule is my special guest, Exo Nation, www.ghostygirl.com. Uh, Leslie, what was the first paranormal experience or ghost experience that you ever had? Well, it was when I was about 12 years old, and mm-hmm. I was living in the house I grew up in uh, on a, a Native American burial ground in Des Moines, Washington. It was on a, a hill that overlooked the Puget Sound. And I was in my basement bedroom. And I suddenly heard this heart-wrenching sobbing. Mm -hmm. And I just assumed it was my teenage sister and thought she was having some crisis with a boy. But she sounded so alarmed. I I leapt up. I was lying on the bed. I leapt up out of the bed, and I ran out of the room toward the sound. Uh, But the crying moved. And as I ran through the house, it always seemed to be about one room away. But it was the sound of somebody's heartbreaking. It was the um, the most um, sorrow you can imagine. And finally, it just faded away. And there was no explanation for it. Uh, my little brothers were outside. My sister wasn't home. Mm-hmm. I found my mom in the kitchen making dinner, dry-eyed. And I learned soon after that the family up the street would hear this crying on a daily basis. And they would hear it first in the field behind their house around dusk. And as it got later and darker, the crying got louder until it seemed to be coming from their basement, accompanied by the sound of jars rolling and bones crunching. Ooh. 
Tell me, oh, where in your experience, or according to the people that you've spoken to over the years while doing research for your books, where are most ghosts most often seen? Well, people report seeing them on staircases, mm -hmm. in hallways, and many, many times in windows and in mirrors and other reflective surfaces. And I found so many of the cases of ghosts seen in reflection that I made it the theme of a book, Ghost in the Mirror. And I found that there's a, um, there's a consistent way that the apparition appears in the mirror. And every single person who's ever described this to me has always described it in the exact way. They'll say that they're looking in the mirror and they see in the reflection um, somebody standing behind them. And they whirl around to see who's there. There's no one there. And mm -hmm. when they turn back, the image remains in the mirror. It's just that they disappear, they go whoosh, vanish, goodbye? They're, they're not behind them, actually, but they're, but they're in the mirror, or they're appearing in the mirror. So they, when they turn around, there's no one there, but, but they look back and there's the image. And it will wow. usually remain for a second or two before it goes. A any idea on, on how or the, the theory behind this ghostly apparition in a mirror? Well, there, there is a possibility that the ghost is there, but we're just not able to see it until we're looking at the world backwards. And that may disable our filters, because oh. when we're looking in the mirror, everything's in reverse. So it changes our perspective on things. What do most ghosts look like? Is, is there a ghostly standard? Um, there's a range that people report, and it can be anything from sort of a, a wispy, smoky apparition, a shadowy figure, mm -hmm. to somebody who's kind of translucent or partially manifested. There's a lot of times people will describe ghosts as being just manifested from the top up or missing legs. And then there are ghosts who are seen as solid human beings, and people don't even realize that they're looking at a ghost until it disappears. So what you may think is a person may actually be a ghost? So if you would met somebody on the street, yeah. you would have no reason to think that you weren't looking at a live human being unless that person vanished. How do we explain that a ghost can actually appear to be so solid, so human, when I always thought ghosts were rather wispy if they were translucent? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, and I don't think anybody does. But I have heard the theory that mm -hmm. that some ghosts are able to manifest and that they draw energy from the things around them. And that is why possibly uh, electric electronic equipment will fail when ghosts are nearby because the ghosts are pulling that energy. Now, I don't know if that's true, but that is a theory. Yeah. Tell me, what kind of sounds does a ghost make, then? Well, the most common sounds that people report hearing in haunted houses are things like doors slamming shut, yeah. and then sometimes followed by a pattern of footsteps coming down the hallway. Sometimes the footsteps can be heard on their own without the door slamming. They hear conversation, usually muted conversation or voices that seem to be coming from a distant place, um, crying, which is the, the thing that I heard, and also, sometimes people report hearing music. Interesting. Music. Uh, what kind of music? Are we talking radio music? Are we talking ghostly, spooky music? Or are we talking about um, music from another era? I've heard a wide range of reports. Um, sometimes it's just a, a note or two, mm -hmm. and sometimes it sounds like a concert in the next room. It's always coming from the distance. It's um, the way people have described it to me. That when they hear the music, it it sounds like it's in another part of the house. Have you ever experienced this phenomenon yourself? I don't know if I have because there's so many times when you do hear music and you just assume it's a radio that yeah, the neighbor is so. playing. Hmm. But as to my knowledge, I have not heard ghostly music. Interesting. All right. All right. Are there any scents or odors that may be associated with ghosts? You know, when, when you think that a ghost is a deceased person, um, do, does, the, 
Do they smell like their favorite perfume? If uh, the ghost in real life smoked a pipe, would there be the odor of tobacco or pipe tobacco in the air when they're around? Definitely. And I find this a lot at haunted museums that Mm. were once mansions. It's very common to hear that people are smelling like a flowery perfume with an old-fashioned scent or, like you said, um, tobacco from a pipe. And in a case where somebody actually thinks they know the ghost, they'll be able to recognize the scent as the perfume they wore or the particular tobacco that the, um, that the person smoked in life. Now, you were talking about... Um haunted mansions that have been turned into museums. Are there a lot of those? And uh, can you tell us some experiences that you've heard about in these haunted museums? Well, there tend to be, every big city tends to have at least one, usually a historic home that's Mm -hmm. been uh, restored or um, bought by a historical society. And then the, the interior is set up to look like the house did in the era when the family lived there. And um, I think that the very fact that they're bringing in old-time furniture probably really sets the stage for ghosts, because one of the theories is ghosts are drawn to things that are familiar to them. Now, um, there are these places all over the country where people can visit. And, for instance, in, um, in San Diego, California, there's the Whaley House, and that's a pretty famous haunted place. Mm-hmm. The Whaley family was a prominent family there, and there's been a lot of activity over the years. Now, there was a, um, a horrible suicide there in the 1800s, and the, um, the daughter of the family, Violet Whaley, had a heartbreaking marriage that ended in divorce, which was really a big scandal in those days. And the curators of the museum kept this a secret. They promoted the fact that the place was haunted, but they didn't want the public to know there had been a suicide. But when I researched it, I, I dove into the archives and I found the description. I found the uh, account of Violet's suicide. And I think that explains some of the haunting because people have actually seen the apparition of a young woman there in an upstairs bedroom manifested from the waist up and she's either packing or unpacking a suitcase. And I think that's probably Violet Whaley uh, um, reenacting a very traumatic time of her life, um, coming home after her marriage failed. Fascinating. Tell me, during the, the entire time that you've been looking into ghosts, the paranormal, have you found any common denominators when researching haunted places? Well, I found a number of them, and there are a couple I found that um, I thought were particularly interesting. I find again and again and again that paranormal activity escalates when remodeling is being done. Really? As if uh, when you're disturbing what's already there? That makes a lot of sense. That's the theory, is that the energy is disrupted. And then some people believe that the the ghosts manifest Mm -hmm. because they're upset because their environment is being changed. Of course, no one knows what the answer is. But I noticed that there was a, um, there seems to be this thing where repairmen who are up on ladders will often witness ghosts. And I've heard this a number of times. For instance, in um, in Raleigh, North Carolina, mm-hmm. there is a place called the Mordecai House, which was a plantation at one time, and it's a beautiful museum. And there was a cur- curator there who arrived one morning to find that the repairman was plastering the ceiling, and he was pale, and his hands were shaking. And he asked her, were you here a few minutes ago? And she said, no. And he said, because I saw this woman in an old-fashioned dress come down that stairway, and then she crossed the hall and opened the French doors and went into that room. Oh, wow. And he said he, he, wasn't, he didn't think she was a ghost. He thought she was somebody maybe in, in a closing for a reenactment. He climbed up the ladder and he walked into the room and there was no one there. Well, the curator told him that she thought he'd probably just seen Mary Mordecai. And she, he was not the first one to see her. Others had seen her come down those, that very staircase over the years. Spooky stuff, Leslie. Please stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exonation. Great hour with my special guest this hour, Leslie Rule. She's the author of six books. Her website is www.ghostygirl.com. That's www.ghostygirl.com. 
Com. Leslie, you and I have to take a little break for the news. We'll both be back in a couple of minutes. Once again, Leslie Rule is our special guest. Ghostygirl.com. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. We're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and Ustream. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. ExoNation Leslie Rule is our special guest of this hour, www.ghostygirl.com. Here's a question I get. I bet you get asked all the time, Leslie. Can a ghost actually go forward and backward in time, or are they fixed in one specific time? Well, um, when it comes to the other side, there probably is no time. And so it would make sense that a ghost can move forward or backward. And I have had cases where apparitions have appeared before the person in question died. There was a case in Kansas City, Missouri, in a horrible 1981 freak accident at the Hyatt Regency Hotel, Mm -hmm. the 40-story luxury hotel. They were having a a tea dance in the lobby, and there were four skywalks above where people could stand and look down. And there was a, a flaw in the engineering, and one of the skywalks collapsed, and then pancaked onto the other, and they both fell to the floor, and over 100 people were killed. It, it, was, it was a horrible scene. And it turned out that days before this happened, people in the neighborhood had reported seeing dancing apparitions outside their windows. So it seems that the ghosts appeared before they died. And it also could have been um, a pre- precognitive vision. Um, but I, I think it makes sense that um, a ghost would not be limited by, the, um, by time in the way that we are because they wouldn't have the same structure. Hmm. Now, is it possible, in your experience, for a ghost to communicate with another ghost? And have you actually heard or seen this happening? I have not seen it happening. Um, I have heard people talk about hearing conversation. In um, the Oxford Hotel in downtown Denver, it's a very haunted hotel, and I stayed there with uh, two women who were paranormal investigators, um, Debbie Constantino and Janice Oberding. We all stayed in that room, and I was in a room by myself, and one of the women woke up, and she could hear the sound of ghostly conversation, two males talking to each other, and it seemed to be coming from the couch. Mm. And she became so frightened that she, um, she was on a little tiny cot, but she woke up the other woman and asked her to crawl into bed with her because uh, it, it really terrified them. So uh, to the best of your knowledge, uh, what I'm, try- I'm trying to understand here if it's possible to show 
uh, an intelligence from these ghosts? Or, or are they just simply imprints in the time-space continuum? Because if there was an intelligence, shouldn't they be able to interact with each other? That's a really interesting point to bring up. Yeah, I hear um, They could very likely mm-hmm. interact with each other, and I don't know if they do, but I do have cases where they interact with live human beings. Now, there are cases, I believe, where they are simply imprints, yeah. um, what they call a place memory, where um, an image or a, a scene is inexplicably imprinted upon the environment and it can be played back at a later time, like a loop of film. Right. But then there are the cases where people tell me about ghosts actually assisting them. There have been cases where, where ghosts have saved people's lives. But ha- has there ever been a case where a ghost has had an intelligent conversation with someone? Many, many people have told me really? about having conversations with ghosts. Usually when they are... Um, the conversations make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. It's usually a case of somebody who has had a dead relative or another loved one appear to them, and they will tell me about um, a very um, clear conversation and a clear image of a grandfather, perhaps, who sat down on the bed next to them and actually talked to them, and the conversation went back and forth. And that seems to be a little different than what we think of as like a ghost in a haunted place. These tend to be spirits that are probably not um, not tethered to Earth, but can go wherever spirits are allowed to go in the afterlife and choose to come for a visit. Can They're probably a lot, um, if that's the case, mm-hmm. which is the leading theory that, that spirits who are not tethered to Earth do go off and do have more control, um, they're probably um, a lot clearer in their thinking. And one of the thoughts about the, the traditional ghost who's haunting a spot is that they may be confused about where they are and what, um, what time period they're in. Tell me, are some spots more haunted than others, and if so, why? Well, we tend to see more paranormal activity in places where a uh, tragedy has occurred, uh, particularly a traumatic death, such as murder or suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a place in Roslyn, Washington, called the Pioneer Restaurant. It's in a historic building, and the basement once once was the site of the So Delicious Bottling Company. And during Prohibition, they had um, a bootleg business, and it was accessible through a couple of hidden tunnels. And one day a stranger was in town, and he was nosing around, and he he poked his head into one of the tunnels, and um, someone shot him dead on the spot because he was getting too close. And he has been seen in recent years lurking near the spot where the tunnels used to be. Um, He's been described as having a beard, a, a plaid shirt, and jeans. And apparently, being a murder victim, he either wants justice or he was so shocked by the event that he might not realize that time has passed and he's apparently stuck here. Have you heard any haunting reports of spirits at the site of the former Twin Towers in New York City? Because that was a horrific event. Yes, and I have heard mumblings about that, but... I chose not to pursue it because it is still such a a devastating loss to the country, and so Mm -hmm. many people are still in mourning that I didn't want to um, publicize things that I found because people have such different perspectives on what ghosts are, and it could be really upsetting to some family members. So basically what what you're doing is you're being very respectful. I try to, and I, I tend to choose... Cases where mm-hmm. the tragedies occurred so long ago that living people are not going to be upset. They're probably not going to be around. I do have some cases that are more recent, but I tend to choose the older ones. And I respect you for that. Leslie, why is it that murder victims stay around instead of going to the other side once the the perpetrator has been arrested and you know, uh, justice has been done. 
Why do they stay around after that? Yeah. You know, actually, I have noticed that um, they do tend to be around more before justice is served. Mm -hmm. And sometimes once justice is served, the paranormal activity stops. But perhaps if it does continue, the ghost may not be aware that justice was served. Or, as I mentioned earlier, they may not even be aware that they're dead. All right, the fact that they may not be aware that they're dead, doesn't this kind of squash the concept that there might be some intelligent design to a spirit? I don't think so, because I think there would be a range of reactions tending, that that would depend on the personality of the person in life. Um, they may just have been in a very confused, shocked state, mm-hmm. and it may just take them a while to become aware. And on the other side, a century may be just a blink of the eye. True. How come nobody has ever seen the ghost of a dinosaur? I've heard of ghosts of horses. I've heard. <laughs> you know, go- I wonder when I hear about the yeah. Loch Ness monster and things like that mm-hmm. if that's what they're seeing is apparitions of dinosaurs. Well, it, it, then that, the only apparition that has ever been reported in history would be the Loch Ness Monster because I've never heard of a dinosaur a ghost. And, and you know what? I've never heard of anyone seeing a, dino, a, a ghost of a Neanderthal or a Cro-Magnon. It seems that ghosts seem to have been manifesting since the, what, mid-1700s in North America. Why is that? That's a really good question. It's possible that after so many years, after thousands of years, yeah. that they do let go. Okay. And maybe someone did. Maybe Sasquatch is a Neanderthal. But if that's the case, then we have a film record of the of a what Neanderthal ghost when it comes to the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Is it possible that humans, in their own psyche, by their own psyche, in a time of need, desperation, or fear, could actually project and manifest their own ghost? Yes, I do think that that does happen. How do we dispel the difference between a manifested ghost, which is done by humans, and a real ghost? Or is there a difference? Well, I think that there would be definitely be a, a, a difference, but I think that if a number of people mm-hmm. are seeing the apparition and, and see the apparition in a pattern over time, that it's likely that it is a disembodied spirit and not simply um, something that someone is projecting. Okay. Do you believe in reincarnation? That makes a lot of sense to me. It, it just um, and it's a really comforting theory mm-hmm. because of the fact that some people's lives are so tragic. It's heartbreaking to think yeah. that's the only chance to get. But I've had throughout my life so many experiences where I've met people that I'm just sure that I've known them before. All right, my my question is a two part one, and that was part one. Part two is why would a person come back in one form as a ghost and not as a form? of another life that they had led. Would you clarify that? The question For, all right, we were talking about reincarnation. Let's say that I die, and tomorrow I decide I'm going to start haunting Laura, just because I can. Why would I come back and haunt Laura as Rob instead of some other character that I may have been in a previous lifetime? Well, it's possible that you're doing both and that you're, it's hard to wrap our minds around, but one of the theories is that we can be in in a number of places simultaneously. Mm -hmm. For instance, it's possible that you could uh, reincarnate and you've already moved on to another life, yet at the same time, you are remaining in the spot where you died and you're haunting the location. Is it possible? Is it possible for a living person to be a ghost? Well, 
I think that that probably would more likely be that they are, if someone is seeing an apparition of a living person, it is the person astral projecting, or projecting do- themselves. All right, so we did, so that would be a doppelganger, before. right? Um, that- yeah, that's, that's what they call them. Right. But, but I have had cases where people will, and this is, seems to be a, a fairly common thing, where someone will, um, they'll be alive and well in one place, and their family members will see them mm-hmm. in another spot, like in another state. Uh, recently, I was talking to a woman who was heartbroken because she couldn't be with her grandfather as he was dying. And um, after the event, she and her brother got in an argument about it because he insisted that he had seen his sister sitting on the bed, sitting on the deathbed, and that she was there as their grandfather was dying, but she wasn't there. And this is a really common thing where people tend to uh, project themselves. Sometimes they might be awake and they're not even aware they're doing it, but there seems to be some kind of a split that I can't explain. I just know that people report that this happens. Interesting. Please stand by, Leslie. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exonation Leslie Rule is our very special guest. It's always great talking to Leslie. Now, her website is www.ghostygirl.com. That's www.ghostygirl.com. And Leslie has written a number of books, and if you go to her website, you can find them or listen to these titles. Coast to Coast Ghost, True Stories of Hauntings Across America, Ghosts Among Us, True Stories of Spirit Encounters, When the Ghost Screams, True Stories of Victims Who Haunt And Ghost in the Mirror, Real Cases of Spirit Encounters. Once again, Leslie's website is www.ghostygirl.com. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go. In over 36 years in law enforcement, I've learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, extraterrestrials, and UFOs, how we gather that evidence of their existence, preserve that same evidence, and present it to a court of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Come with me on a journey that seeks to prove with undisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Join me, Larry Lawson, host of the Paranormal Stakeout, coming to the X-Zone Broadcast Network. Check out the broadcast schedule for Paranormal Stakeout with yours truly, Larry Lawson, at www.xzbn.net. For more information about me, my travels, and my team, check out our website at www.paranormalfbi.com or join us on Facebook at Florida Bureau of Paranormal. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. X Zone Nation, Leslie Rule is my special guest. It's always a great pleasure having you with us, Leslie. And uh, I've been told by the people upstairs that you're going to be back with us in September, and I'm really happy to hear that. I look forward to it. Hey, Leslie, here's a question. Are children more susceptible to the paranormal than adults are? We think so. There's just so many cases of children who seem to be conversing Mm -hmm. with ghosts, particularly a deceased grandparent. I hear this over and over again. Well, people will tell me about their toddler who suddenly is giggling and pointing and interacting with someone that the adults can't see. And they'll sometimes 
call out a name. Um, sometimes it's a special nickname that the grandparent had in life that the child has never heard. And so that's kind of validating. But we think that children, um, that everybody is born with the ability to see ghosts, but that it's hammered out of us as we grow up because people tell us that it's not possible to see ghosts. Um, there's a weird perspective on ghosts in our culture. And so we develop filters where we can't see what's apparently there. Why, why are ghosts so taboo with our culture? I think a lot of it is rooted in religion. Uh, people are afraid of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people believe that ghosts are not um, spirits of dead human beings, but that they're, they're demons. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. No, nobody really knows, and we're not going to know until we get to the other side. But I lean toward thinking that they would tend to be um, spirits, just spirits of regular human beings. And finally, what do you think about all the different paranormal shows that are on the boob tube all over the place now? I think people are having a lot of fun with it, and I think it's great that if that people are enjoying it. And um, a lot of these people are very serious about their investigating, and, and um, they're learning a lot. I don't know. You must be watching a totally different channel than I usually watch, because the ones I watch are really far out and really hokey, all this night vision. Uh, don't, don't these ghost hunters realize that ghosts can also be seen during the day? <laughs> That's a good question. Actually, I don't watch a lot of that, but Neither I have I. seen some of it. Yeah. And the, the shows that I've seen, the investigators seemed like they were taking it seriously. Hmm. And then all the paranormal investigators that I've spoken to while I'm researching they tend to be grounded. They tend to be um, looking at this with a, a critical eye. Um, but, of course, there are going to be some people that approach it in kind of a wacky manner. Yeah. Hey, sensationalism itself. Leslie, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and where they can get your books. Oh, they should be able to get my books at, at any bookstore or online. Um, if the store doesn't have them, they will order them for you. Um, you can feel free to email me at llrule30 at aol.com. I'd love to hear about people's experiences. And my website is www.ghostygirl.com. Ghosty Girl, great having you with us, Leslie Rule. Always a pleasure. Look forward to speaking to you again in September. Thank you, Rob. Happy hauntings, my friend. Leslie Rule has been my guest this hour, ghostygirl.com. And I'll be back on the other side of the news at the top of the hour at six and a half minutes past as the X-Zone continues. We're right here live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, X-Zone Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and Ustream.